and his mother had been accused of poisoning him. They took off one of his arms from just below the elbow. And there was a black shadow of a person right there. Hello, America. Oh. Now he's the main ghost, he's the main one that's seen. Wow, maxed out. Whoa, what did it say? It said hell. And you can clearly hear four footsteps coming down the steps in there. Is that door gonna open? That sounds like the door's gonna open. Uh, triangle, tri oh, oh, blocks went off. Is this door normally just stand open? No. The hell? Hello and welcome to another adventure on our paranormal quest, and we wanted to start out this episode by wishing all of you out there a very Merry Christmas, a very Happy Holidays, a very Happy New Year, whatever you celebrate, wherever you are in the world, we hope you are celebrating with family, friends, and you are having an absolutely amazing and memorable time. And what better time? in continuing our adventures in Australia to take you to two locations that you would never expect to be haunted. These places are used through the holiday season, not only for preparation, but also for gathering of friends and family. And thousands of people have visited and been to these places having no idea what paranormal experiences they could have. So join us as we go inside these two unsuspecting haunted locations, one of them during the daytime, telling you the ghost stories and the things that happened here that lead people to believe that it's haunted. And the second, we will perform an after dark paranormal investigation to see if we can capture the strange and unusual paranormal activity that people claim to experience inside. All right, Dave, so we had to stop off here in the city of Adelaide at one of the most unsuspecting locations that we ever thought could be haunted. Oh yeah, absolutely, one of a kind. It is, I think this is the only place like this in the world that has ghost tours. And we're gonna be walked around by CAG from Adelaide Haunted Horizons, and she's gonna tell us the ghost stories of the Adelaide Zoo. Get ready for some creepy critters. <laughs> <laughs> creepy critters and not so creepy critters because we are joined right over here or not joined she left she left we had a quite beautiful giraffe right here just a second ago which I'll include a clip of right now named Nolene who has abandoned us so but Let's walk around and have CAG tell us some stories of the Adelaide Zoo. We're not able to get in and investigate, but before we get into the investigation at the Adelaide Arcade, I think it's important that everyone learn some of the stories of the zoo here. So if you happen to find yourself in Adelaide, you can come here to the zoo and know that it's not just the animals that make this place interesting. There's a history here and there are ghosts inside the Adelaide Zoo. So you ready to go find CAG? I'm ready. Let's go find her and see what story she has to give for us. That's right. Let's go find her. The one thing about the Adelaide Zoo is it is the second oldest zoo in all of Australia, and it has a long history. But when employees have to consistently work with animals much bigger and more dangerous than themselves, things can definitely go very wrong very quickly. So what I love about the Adelaide Zoo is they don't hide the past of what zoos used to be like. And this is used to be this used to be the polar bear enclosure. And as you can see, it's quite small. So I'm going to take you to 1920. Uh, I'm going to talk to you about a keeper called Samuel May. Now, Samuel May, it was his job to clean out uh, the, the pool here. Um, but what he used to do is to clean out the pool, but he also used to hose down the polar bears as well because it 
keep them occupied and keep them cool, okay? So um, he could do it from this side, he didn't have to go inside with them. Um, one of the polar bears had a bit of a habit of getting too close to uh, the fencing. On one particular day, this polar bear got so close to the fence that he put his arm through the bars. He swiped at Samuel May and took off one of his arms from just below the elbow. All right. Yikes. Now, wow. so the keeper at the time was Alfred Minchin. He was in the Minchin house, which is the other side of the zoo. He heard the screams. He knew exactly where to, to come. When he came here, he found Samuel May on the floor. Now, he thought he'd tripped and slipped or slipped on the wet concrete. It wasn't until he got closer that he realized that uh, one of his arms was missing. Um, now, he was taken to hospital. He didn't die here. He was taken to hospital, um, but he did actually die from shock and from his injuries as well. Wow. Wow. Now, do you ever, do you ever pick anything up from Samuel or? We did once. We were in the nocturnal house. We, there's a keeper in the nocturnal house that actually carries on cleaning out the animals. How cool is that? That is cool. You've got cool. somebody doing your job for you. I'm looking for somebody that does housework. <laughs> um, but yeah, so we've, we've actually had one of the keepers, who's actually one of our patrons. She said she was in there cleaning out the hopping mice. She looked across at the ghost bats and she saw somebody cleaning out the ghost bats and she waved and they waved back. Well, how cool was that? So after she went into the kitchen to find out who it was to thank them and there'd been nobody in. Wow. wow. And so. I, we had, I had my biggest experience in the nocturnal house. We were investigating, we're doing live streams so we could yeah. introduce, we had the tours here. And there's a big tunnel, it's a U-shaped tunnel around the back of the nocturnal house. And we were doing experiments, audio experiments. And I, we could hear, or I could hear, footsteps coming from around the other side of the U-turn and went down there, was kind of doing the EVP had just started and asked if anybody could come and talk to me happened to turn like that to the side of me and there was a black shadow of a person right there to the point where i i i let backwards sent all my equipment flying it was only there briefly it was there one second then gone there are people that have visited the adelaide zoo who have experienced or seen what they believe to be the spirits of these former employees who lost their lives while performing their job one of the areas that's very close by that is said to have frequent unexplainable activity is the nocturnal house, where all of the nocturnal animals of the Adelaide Zoo are kept in almost complete darkness. Turning on night vision? Makes sense going into the nocturnal house. Oh God, I can't see where you are. <laughs> Of course, where we are, we're at the back of these, so you can see the shape of it. Mm -hmm. So we've got tunnels all the way along there. Yeah, it's quite. A, quite so a, I would have seen the figure down that end there, down this end, kind of towards that corner on the other side of the cages would be where I saw the figure next to me. So wow, that'd be pretty creepy in the dark. Uh, it was pitch black. There's yeah. no windows. There's no lights. There's nothing on the other side of the service tunnel. You've seen the bilbies guy? You don't bit. see these very often out and about. What is it? It's a bilby. A bilby. An Australian bilby. Look how gorgeous that is. How cute is it? <laughs> They're endangered. Gosh. They are. Yeah. Hello. 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 Ghost, Ghost Tube said hello. America. Oh. Are you serious? <laughs> Whoa, that's the only the third word it said since we got here and it says America. Hello in America. Hello in America. Well, it doesn't have American, does it? No, I don't think so. It's got to be America. Yeah. Yes, that's exactly where we're from. That's cool. Now, Ghost Tube is an experimental investigative tool because we can't prove that the sensors within the device can be influenced to create these words, but this is the first time that the word America has come out of our ghost tube in all the years that we've been using it. And in this place, in this time, when we are standing in Australia at one of the most haunted zoos in the country, it's definitely a very, very strange experience. Hello. 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 Ghost, ghost tube said hello. America. Oh, are you serious? 
nocturnal house is pretty interesting. So yeah. it's very interesting walking around here and seeing some of these animal enclosures and uh, especially hearing the story of Samuel and the possible ghost stories and hauntings of the Adelaide Zoo. It really puts into perspective that this is just a place like any other. There's tragedies, there's death, there's things that can go wrong. And those things that have gone wrong in the past have apparently left a mark on this zoo that people still experience to this day. And that is very, very interesting to think about. Another reason why we think the Adelaide Zoo is so haunted is because um, right next door is the Botanic Gardens and there we actually had our first major asylum. It was a massive venue and some of the, um, the patients in there were found sometimes wandering the Adelaide Zoo as well. Um, so they used to come over here. Also the zoo is surrounded by the Torrens River and in the Torrens River there's been numerous accidents, people getting caught in the reeds and the weeds so we've had unfortunate drownings, um, there's been murders around here and unfortunately people taking their own lives so very very sad area but that's all nearly, it surrounds nearly the whole of the zoo so it could be one of the reasons why this place can be so haunted. Just like any haunted location, those that spend the most time there are the ones that are most likely to experience strange and unusual things. So the employees that work at the Adelaide Zoo have had experiences while working here. All right, so we're outside the Animal Health Care Centre and one afternoon they had a really weird experience here. Um, one of the ladies uh, was working in there and she said the lights started to flash. It wasn't a case of the lights flashing like that. They were flashing all over the place. It was just ridiculous. Um, she picked up a mobile phone to film it. And every time she did, it stopped. Put a mobile phone down, it started again. And she did that a couple of times. And in the end, she went, oh, come on, Mr. Minchin, because um, the first director, first three directors here were, were called Minchins. Um, that was the surname. So she said, oh, come on, Mr. Minchin. And she picked her mobile phone up and she managed to film and it went all the way down the building. And these lights were going absolutely crazy. Um, they've had the electrics checked. There's nothing wrong with them. It's never happened before and it's never happened since, but it did the freak people out that was in there, so. Did the Minchins die here, do you think? Um, we, now, it's difficult because we, we think one did, um, one of them, it's rumoured that one of them had a heart attack in the Minchin house, which we're going to go to. But when I try and find out where he died, it only says Adelaide. And as Adelaide's quite a big place, it's very difficult for me to know um, whether he did die in that building or not. But if we know which one it is, it would, be, it would have been um, Alfred Minchin, the, the second director. Alfred Minchin. But we're still trying to find out whether he did die in that building or... But he lived there for 40 years, so... Wow. Oh, cool. So check out the Minchin house then. Mm -hmm. Let's go. The Minchin family was in charge of the Adelaide Zoo for years, and the fact that their family even had a house on the property means that their entire lives were dedicated to this place. And it only makes sense that after they've passed away that they might stick around and continue to watch after the place, even after death. We're standing uh, in front of the Minchin house, and this is we use for the directors to live in um, when it was built in 1887, 1888, right through to 1970. And it's now um, part of the head office where they have a lot of the paperwork in there as well. So a haunted building. We've had numerous things happening there, haven't we? Yeah, well, I first found out about it at the, it was actually at the Tourism Awards. So I happened to be sitting next to Steve who works here. And we got talking about ghosts and the zoo. And he said he's a big skeptic on the ghosts. But then he said, like a lot of people do, but there was this one time and he said he came in early in the morning, walked through the door, got to the staircase and he heard a noise from upstairs, happened to look up and there was a lady. He said she, he, she was dressed in a white dress, very long dress, old hair, the hair was up. And he did point out that there is a photograph, which I'll show you in a minute, of the family of Minchin family here. And it's over there. He said it actually looked like the lady in the photograph. Now, as he looked, she just turned around and disappeared and lost track of it. So that's how we started, because then we said, hey, you ever thought about having ghost tours here, didn't we? Yeah, we've got numerous um, stories to do with this one. So the first one I'm going to tell you was one of our patrons again. In fact, she was the same lady that told us about um, actually seeing the figure in the nocturnal house. 
She used to come in here on a Saturday morning to clean up the aquarium that used to be downstairs. And she said the amount of time she came in here to clean up the aquarium, but she'd hear shuffling of, and footsteps upstairs and then footsteps coming down the stairs towards so when she was the only one in the building. Even staff don't like going in there sometimes during the day, never mind at night. So a um, bit of a strange place to be in. Another story which always makes me laugh, the head of the bird department was going past one night. Nobody was in the zoo. This building was locked. He walked past and at the very top window, at the top there, he actually saw a lady standing there. And again, she had the high neck clothes on, the hair tied back. He knew that it wasn't quite right. And he did what any good person would do from the head of the bird department. He put his head down and carried on walking. <laughs> There's no way he was going to look into that in the slightest. So. Speaking of the bird department, yeah, I know. <laughs> yes, I, I know. So this place is absolutely crazy with the history, the ghost stories, but one of the craziest things about being here in Australia is the wildlife, not just inside the zoo, but outside. Because we were walking around just outside the gates of the zoo now, and there are these absolutely beautiful fruit bats. I mean, trees filled with fruit bats. I mean, take a look at some of these. They're huge and there are thousands of them atop these trees and they're beautiful creatures it's unlike anything we've ever seen in america and uh, it's just surreal to be here in this moment to actually get to experience it and see things that we would never get to see back home all right and with that we are getting ready to leave the adelaide zoo here in adelaide south australia this has been really cool it's really neat to hear such a unique location with such cool ghost stories very creepy stories. Yeah, and so we're gonna get into the investigation of the Adelaide Arcade now. Another really creepy place here, just a few blocks away. So if you're ever in South Australia, if you're ever in Adelaide, you can contact Haunted Horizons and come in here and ghost hunt in the zoo for yourself. Oh yeah. It's definitely creepy, so. But let's get into the arcade and see what happens there tonight. Let's go. Let's go. The second location that we are visiting and the location that we're investigating tonight is a place that people visit frequently to prepare for the holiday season. A shopping center called the Adelaide Arcade. Over a century old, this place has a long history and people have died inside this building. Now the story of our investigation of the Adelaide Arcade begins long before we actually ever made it there because we had planned to get there during the daytime to not only get shots of this beautiful shopping center, but also to have Allison give us a walkthrough to tell us the history and hauntings of this building during the day so we would know what to expect when the sun went down. But it turns out that just wasn't meant to be. There was construction everywhere around that block and we couldn't even get to where we could park our cars anywhere near the building itself. And with all of the gear that we had to transport into the building, it took us forever once we had found a parking garage to unload our stuff and walk all the way to the arcade. By the time we made it there, the sun was already going down and the tour that was scheduled for that evening was getting ready to begin. So we were quickly shuffled into a basement room underneath of the arcade that they call the Tea Room. And we would have to stay there until the tour had concluded upstairs. But while we were down there in that basement, even though it's dark and we're in night vision, Allison told us who they believe haunts the Adelaide Arcade. All right, so we are back here at the arcade. I hope you enjoyed the little clips from our zoo adventure this afternoon. We are now down in the tea room and we were just setting up. Allison's gonna tell us a little bit about the history of this tea room in the arcade and what activity they get down here. And as we were talking about the lights being turned off, the flux turned green, which signified that something went and touched the left side, which was very bizarre. So. Rolling, rolling, rolling. This is Ryan Audio in the basement of the arcade. We are getting ready to start this session here. Whenever you guys are ready to roll. Turn that light off right there. Ooh, just yeah. Off. The flux just went off. Flux just went off. Woo. The action cam is on, so it got it. It did. 
there's anyone down here, we're going to be here for a little while and we're going to try and speak to you and we hope that you'll come out and talk to us. Allison, what happened down here in the basement of this arcade that leads you to believe that there's paranormal activity here? All right. We've had a lot of stuff happen down here and I don't think anybody died as such in this room. It was an old coffee shop or a coffee emporium, tea and coffee emporium for the well-to-do people of the time. So they would come down here and they would have their cups of tea. There's an old well in the corner that they used to get the water from, which is still there, by the way. And there wasn't any death, but there was two very tragic deaths in the arcade itself, plus another murder just on the outside of the arcade. And it seems like whatever energy is happening in the arcade gets drawn down here as well. Now, one of the deaths was little Sydney. He was a little two, three year old boy and his mother had been accused of poisoning him. So she turned the gas on apparently, poisoned her little boy and then tried to kill herself by drinking alcohol and taking sleeping tablets. Her husband had left her. Her husband had taken Sydney and kidnapped him, taken him off to Tasmania. She managed to get him back. So you can only imagine the PTSD and the, the, the trauma that she was going through. So there is a question mark whether that is what she intended. Because at the end of the day, she wouldn't have been sleeping well. You wouldn't be sleeping well. You'd be stressed as well. You don't know whether your husband's going to come back and make another attempt at taking your child. What better way to try and knock yourself out to get some sleep than to have a bit of alcohol and to also take some sleeping tablets? Now, Sydney had been known to turn on the gas before. He had been caught playing with the knobs on the gas. And it was a big question mark, had he done that? Because can't wake mummy up. Wakes up, can't wake mummy up. Toddler starts to play with buttons and knobs. He could have done it himself. So it's a bit of a sad story. Now, one of the things we caught down here during the investigation was we were running audio with our tour. We were asking questions and one of the ladies on the tour said, Sydney, she said, if you're here, did you turn the gas on? And we caught a very clear child's voice going, I did. Yeah, and that would be, I mean, there's a mystery to that, right? There is, and definitely. We have a lot of childlike stuff down here. In fact, most of what we've had down here has been a child. I've had, in the middle of a tour, I've had my jacket, it pulled me off balance just about. Something tugged my jacket while I was telling the tour and pulled me. And people have had their hands held. So quite often we'll do what we call a lockdown down here. So we'll put people around this room in the dark and then we'll go quiet for a couple of minutes. And people have said they felt a little, what feels like a child, take their hand. Wow. So it does seem to be very childlike. 1887, there was a caretaker here called Francis Clooney. Now, he looked after the arcade, very proud of the arcade. And then one night, the lights had started to flicker in the arcade. It was just as we got electricity. We were one of the first places to have electricity in here. And we had a massive great generator that ran that electricity. Now, Harcourt, who was the gentleman who was supposed to look after it, he had gone off moonlighting somewhere else that night leaving Francis to go and check on the generator to see why the lights were going on and off. Suddenly in the arcade, the lights just went out completely. Poof. So everybody went to check to see what was up and that's when they found the reason why. Because Francis Clooney had been walking past the generator. He used to wear a long coat. Unfortunately, it was a narrow walkway. It had two massive great flywheels. His jacket had got caught up in the flywheels and it had pulled him in. So now he was completely crushed. So it was, it was a very, very messy end to Francis Clooney. Now he's the main ghost in the Adelaide Arcade. He's the main one that's seen by security guards. He's the main one that is experienced by people in the shops. New person in a the shop, they'll have something happen fairly close to them moving into a new shop. Almost like he just makes himself known. Yeah. So. It's interesting to think about because if, if it was that violent of a death, it was probably very quick. Very quick. Very quick, and he probably had no idea that it even had happened. Those flywheels revolved at about 200 revolutions, 240 revolutions a minute. Yeah. So it, they're going fast. He wouldn't, he wouldn't have stood a chance. 
So, and who, maybe that's why he makes himself known to the, a lot of the yeah. shop guests because he still thinks he's working here. Yep. He's, well, he was very proud. He, he used to wear his... He was in the Crimean War. He used to wear his um, medals on his jacket. And there is a photograph upstairs in the hallway near the toilets where it shows the arcade in that time period, photograph. And there is a gentleman standing in it with a top hat, a long coat, and medals across his jacket. Oh, wow. And everybody pretty much believes that that is Francis Clooney. So we do have a photograph probably of Francis Clooney. And what year did that take place? 1887, he was dragged into that generator. Wow. Now, while we are trapped down here in this basement, unable to get into the upstairs of the building, we had a security guard that was moving between the tour group and the basement where we were to check and make sure that everyone was safe and everyone was happy. Security. That made you jump. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, what time will CAG be coming down, do you reckon? Not only will he be there for safety, but also he is going to be alerting us when the tour is done so we can move up into the arcade to investigate some of the other haunted locations that are up above our heads. Um, oh, we're fine, we're just filming. Okay, when, when will CAG get... REM pod. REM pod. Security just came to check on us to make sure we were okay. Hello? Wow. Who is this? Is Allison this Francis Clooney? Oh, hello. Francis, is that you? Wow. Are you are you standing on the stairs, Francis, or is this is this Sydney? Wow. Maxed out. What were you asking at the time? Nothing. We just said that security came down to check on us and, and then it just started going nuts. It's interesting because you had just to told the story of Francis Clooney. Can you step away from it to let us know that it's you so we know it's not something that's naturally occurring? Can you come down this way? I've never seen it do that before. Like that. It's going around. Yeah, yeah. it's got a pattern to it. It's going in a perfect circle at a perfect sequence. And it had been sitting there for what, like 15, 20 minutes, not oh, yeah. going off? Oh, yeah. Sydney, that's you. Can you step away from it, please? Step away from the red body, know what it is. We use it all the time. I'm gonna reset it. I probably would. Just in case, would you mind holding this yeah. for a sec? It's still bizarre that it just randomly started going off like that. Yeah. It's like, it's, it sounds like an, like an emergency siren. It does. It does, doesn't it? <laughs> One of those buttons, isn't it? Would it be battery? I wonder. You want to set it someplace else for a second just to see if it does it? Oh, that's interesting. Why not? Huh. Let's, uh... So we've determined that that very well could have been the battery going dead. Yeah. Let, let me replace the battery? Yeah. Okay. And then just see if it makes it... At least then you can discount it. But maybe it was the fact that the battery was drained, we're not sure, but it, it seems like the, the REM pod going off was a product of the fact that the batteries within the REM pod were almost dead. At least that's what we think. We'll know for sure once Dave replaces the battery brings it back over here. And if that's the case, we can disprove or debunk the experience that we thought we just had. So, ooh, did it just get really cold right here, Allison? Oh, that happens as well. I feel like right here, it yeah. got really cold. I've had guests and we've followed, we've followed it around the room before. 
about that height usually. Yeah. And comes in amongst the guests and they can feel it. When we were getting ready to start talking to Allison about the spirits that have been seen down here. Okay, back in business. Um, would that have been? No. That knocking sound? That's not CAG. You would hear the whole tour. Do you think it was maybe the security guard? Mm, he would be with the tour. Yeah. He would go back to them because he's part of the tour. Yeah. Let me see something here. Okay. And you would have heard footsteps coming across as well. Whoa, EDI just went off there. Did it? Yeah. Yep, it's oh, still going. There we go. Oh, that's interesting as well, isn't that? All yeah. The equipment going off. I'm going to roll on Ghost Tube. Okay. You, you said his name was Francis? Francis. Francis, are you down here with us? This is the arcade, by the way, for Ghost Tube. Arcade. Tea room. Francis, if you're down here. Oh, EDI, EDI just went green or blue, not green. <laughs> wow. Yeah, all of these devices have been set up for like 15, 20 minutes just to get them acclimated with what's in the room. So. Is there someone over by the well? I have a device in my hand right here. If there are any spirits here with us, you can use this to communicate. Whoa. Did you hear that? Yes. What was I that? I thought it was you. That, that it sounded was like, like a the breath. door. Well, yeah, I'd heard that Did too. Did you hear then, the breath over here though? Yeah, but then right after, it sounded like someone was coming in this door. Whoa. Is this door normally just stand open? No, we shut it. The guard shut it as well as we went out. Well, it's open now. He, clo he closed that? Yeah, because we stopped people from coming in. Look at it, it's open. No, uh, we Stupid. Closed. Stupid. That was not like that. That was what I heard was the door opening. Well, I thought I heard like a sniff or a sneak just behind you. And that door latches too, it's not like it. No, you push it hard and it'll stick. There's no. Oh, there's no latch on. Just push it hard and push it in hard. <laughs> yep, there. So you can't just push it open. Right. It's yeah, too that's... heavy. It's not something the wind can do. Like watch. And you for sure shut that, right? The guard did. Oh, the guard shut it when yeah, he left? Because he doesn't want people just walking down because you've got people in the street there. Yeah. So we can't afford people to just walk down and come in. I mean, check back, but I saw him shut it. So, and you would have heard it. But the, I don't think we had a camera in there when no. you guys were talking, because the REM pod was you going off. You probably would have heard the door though. Yeah. Because it's a loud door. So check back on your audio. Okay. Like well, I'm hanging on this and it's not opening. Yeah. And we'll have to ask him too, when he left, if he shut the door. Yeah. Just to make sure. Just to make sure. Francis, did you just come in here? Or was that Sydney that's playing a prank on us? But also, guys, I just wanted to point out, we can't, we can't declare that as paranormal evidence until we know for sure, or paranormal activity until we know for sure that the guard shut the door. So it's interesting. It's an interesting possibility of phenomena, but we can't say it's paranormal just yet. Mm -hmm. And we may never be able to say it's paranormal, but I swear I heard that door. Okay. Did someone open that door out there? Can you give us an, a sign of your presence? Touch one of the lights or make something happen in this room so we know that you're here with us. Did you touch or move or push that door? Mr. Clooney. Did you hear us talking about you? You know Allison. She has a box in her hand. If you walk up, you might be able to use it to talk. 
Well, Sydney, if you want to come and talk as well, if you're here. You can try and hold my hand. It's just here. Maybe you can speak into this little box as well. Don't be frightened. You know we like to play with you. Cold spot there now. Look at that really cool bright red light on the steps there. We brought that for you. Sydney, if you're here, can you run? You feeling it again? Yeah, I got to chill. I got it here just fractionally as I moved over here and then it's gone. Yeah, well, it's like it's 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 like a very cold mass of air yeah. right here. Around it's usually me. about that height. Yeah, it's like right at my elbow. Yep. Sydney, can you run up the stairs really quick? Really quick. And just see if you can touch that red light on the stairs. Can you do that for me? These guys will be so impressed if you can. Or any of the lights, if you can run up to the lights and you can touch them. You would know CAG, she comes in every couple of weeks, talk to you. She's going to be very proud of you too. Ryan and I have pretty funny voices, don't we? If you like our voices, can you set off that device again? Busy. <laughs> <laughs> you busy, Francis? You busy checking on the tour? Making sure everybody's behaving? All those strangers walking through your arcade. If you've got time to come back and talk to us, we'd be Ooh. grateful. What went off then? Oh, no. Flux went no. That side lights up red, the other side lights up green. Can you show us the green light? Busy. <laughs> <laughs> That's two in a row. That's two in a row. It's not very often you get the same word twice in a row through busy. the ghost tube. I think he's trying to tell you something. I'm busy at the moment. Francis, if you're busy and you would like us to come back down here later to talk to you, can you set off one of our devices to let us know? Bathroom. That's interesting. It is interesting. That's our other haunted area. That's right. The, the ladies' bathroom is thought to be haunted, isn't it, here? The other toilets that you would have gone to, David. Yeah. Where the elevator is. I gather you went to that one yes. earlier. Yes. Whoa. Are you all right? I just heard it again. Something just moved out there. Hello? <clears throat> God. Your voice. What was that? Is that, that you? Wasn't, no. That wasn't me, no. Hello? All right, well, that's not normal sound in here. What were you saying, Keg? Or <laughs> Alice? <laughs> <laughs> I know, he's rattled. <laughs> I was saying the bathroom that you went to, behind where that is and where the elevator is, is where the generator used to stand. Oh, okay. And that's where Francis actually did die, in that area. Something's moving back here. Is there someone out there? Neil. Neil. Spell. No. Do you believe, do you think that maybe that's the tour coming down? No, the tour doesn't touch this area. So where the tour will be now, they'll have finished with this first floor. They'll now be up on the second floor. Oh, okay. They'll be probably at this point in the storeroom. So they won't be anywhere near this part. Wow. I mean, that- They'd be two floors up now. That sounded like somebody walking. It sounded like just here. Yeah. Above us. No. Do 
you be- do you think that maybe that's the tour coming down? And if it was a tour, you're going to hear more than just the odd little step. You're going yeah. to hear 15. Uh, uh, triangle tri- uh, oh, blocks sorry. one off. It went yes for green you're for yes. You're going to hear 15 people walking across there. Right, yeah, that's, that's what I was wondering. Like There'll be like a herd of elephants going across. Did you touch the, that triangle thing again to light it up green? Is that Sydney? There's also one right over here at the bottom of the stairs. Can you try that one? We'd love for you to try one of the other devices for us. Or you can open the door for us again, if that was you. If you've got time, Francis, to come and do that. I'd be grateful if you can open that door, we can all leave. You've got to open the door really wide, though, and then we'll know it's time to go. Front. Front. Well, what was that? I don't know. Well, I didn't hear that one. <laughs> That's our warning, I think. Yep. Pack up. Oh, okay. Question for you, sir. Oh, thank you. When you came in here last time, when you left, did you shut that door? No, I didn't. Oh, you didn't, didn't shut it? I didn't right. open. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Gotcha. All right. So, <clears throat> in true Paranormal Quest fashion, we got to the bottom of it and we got that debunked, but it, it is nice to have that assurance. Yes. That he was the one that left it open. But that does not solve the mystery of the door sound that we heard back in this area. Right. The so, door sound. Unless there was some suction and the door started to close a little bit more. Sliding be. across the ground. Because there is that. No. No. Wasn't that. There's okay. also a door right here. So. There is. But still, we're getting some interesting communication with the flux. We debunked the REM pod, we debunked the door. Things are going right on par as planned. They so are. It's a good thing whenever you debunk. Louder. what did it say? Louder. Talk it's a you. good thing when you debunk stuff. <laughs> <laughs> After all that activity that we just experienced down in the tea room, we have no doubt that there is definitely some strange and unusual things going on here. But on the second floor, there is a room where Allison has captured something very, very strange in the past. All right, so the tour that CAG was giving has just finished up and moved out of the building. That means we have access to the haunted areas inside the arcade here and not just the basement. And Allison, one of the areas that we're gonna be going to now is in the storage room. Yeah, it's another very active place that we've had. So I've been in there, set up a camera. We've left the room and you can clearly hear four footsteps coming down the steps in there and then a male as if thank god they've gone (laughs) so we've had footsteps walking past the tour there's a bricked in door at the very back behind the shelving that goes into the shop behind you here and it's all walled off now but you can hear as if somebody's going towards the door and the people who used to lease this shop used to hear almost somebody coming through that door into the shop so it used to be a walkway whether it's residual or not we don't know would it have been a place where someone would have lived possibly it it would definitely have been either a storage area for the shops here because this balcony you're standing on didn't exist back then so it was one shop downstairs and then a living quarters above that shop or storage quarters so that would have been somebody's living quarters above the shop or possibly storage but Looking at the decorativeness of the light fittings and stuff, I would say definitely a living place. Let's enter night shot. That's right. The storage room is dark. What is that? Huh? Whoa. What? What did you see? 
I didn't see anything. I heard a footstep right over here. Hello? Whoa. What? What did you see? I didn't see anything. I heard a footstep right over here. Hello? Just watch the uh, mail there. Yeah. If there's anyone here with us, my name is Ryan. This is Dave, and of course I'm sure you know Allison. She brought us in here because she said that you like to do things and make things happen and speak to whoever comes in here. We traveled a long way. We came from America all the way here to Australia to speak with you. So when I was in here last, you managed to open and shut that door very wide, right back to the wall, and then slam it shut. And you play with the door. That's why we've got a box in there. So that you can't lock it. Because we want to get out of Because we want to get out at some point. <laughs> <laughs> it's embarrassing when the security have to come and hip and shoulder it. There's a box in my hand right here that you might be able to use to speak to us. Can you walk up and say your name to us? Francis, are you in here with us? What about Henry Harcourt? Henry, are you in here with us? Do you feel guilty about what happened to Francis? If there's anyone here with us, we're trying to use this as opposed to a normal spirit box because this doesn't pull from regular radio stations. You can use your energy to influence this to make it say what you want it to say. Can you come through and speak so that we can hear your voice? Can you come through and tell us your last name, Francis? Who's what is it? Automated. By Henry. Other hand. Tell it's the other hand. I thought it said Mother Hen. I thought it said Mother Hen as Mother well. Hen. Like. <laughs> Mother Hen. All right. Brandon's mother. Grandmother. I thought it said Ryan's mother. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Brandon's mother. Grandmother. I thought it said Ryan's mother. <laughs> All right. Brandon's mother. Grandmother. I thought it said Ryan's mother. Probably a drunkard yelling in yeah. one of the ends. Okay, that was just very creepy. I'd love it. I know. It'd be, I'd love it to be a ghost <laughs> screaming. Most definitely a drunken uh, <laughs> citizen of Adelaide. Yes. But welcome to Adelaide. Welcome to Australia. <gasps> Did you hear that demon <laughs> scream? It's a skinwalker. It's been At that moment, they heard a demonic scream. I did. I did. I did. <laughs> I did. Henry or Francis or Sydney, are you here with us? Yeah. 
Nobody home tonight. We're trying to do what we can to ensure we know when you are trying to talk to us because there's a lot of noise out here. There's a lot of things that could go off in here. So can you give us a definitive sign that you can hear us right now? We'd love to learn your story. It's been very quiet up here in contrast to the basement and what we were getting down there. It seems very quiet up here on this, on this, uh, in this storage room. So I remember Allison, you said that there was a girl's bathroom. Yeah, it's a bathroom just for the staff to use. And some of the staff have been getting quite freaked out in there. Cool. You want to end the night in the girl's bathroom, Dave? It's strange the way you put that, but <laughs> yeah, let's go check it out. Let's go find out if there's activity over there. Okay. there's anyone here with us. My name is Ryan and this is Dave. Seat. Immediately it said seat. There are plenty of seats in here but not really ones that we want to sit on. <laughs> I'm sure many people take a seat when they come in here though. <laughs> There's two men in the ladies' bathroom. We don't mean to be creepy or anything like that, but our lady friends told us that if we come in here, maybe you'll speak with us. <laughs> our lady friends. <laughs> Allison and Cag. Our friends who happen to be ladies. Yes. True Paranormal Quest fashion. Yeah. Time to start the last session. Cue the endless car alarm and screaming of people. Yeah. What if I walked back through here? There's lots of light that you can use. You can touch and light up. Why do people feel uncomfortable in here? A lot of people come in here to use the toilet. What was that? Oh, no, that was over by you. It's also over by you. Is that door gonna open? It sounds like the door is gonna open. Come, you can come on in. Sign. Are you trying to give us a sign? If you want to give us a sign right over here on the sink, there's a... Whoa. What did it say? It said hell. That's not creepy or anything. <laughs> the way it says that is just creepy in and of itself. Yeah. Yes, it is. Can you touch that thing on the sink? Elemental paper. Elemental paper. Whoa, why is this thing just spitting out so many words? Yes, we would love it if you would speak to us. Are you trying to figure out how to use this? Tell us your name if you can.
what you're hearing is people outside. There's not much we can do about it, guys, unfortunately. If there's anyone in here, try and use these. Even this one right here. You can use those to try and communicate with us. And then this box right here in my hand. Oh, wow, EDI. Okay, thank you. Can you try one of the other ones that I just showed you? If you would like for us to just leave, set one of these devices off one more time, just so we know. The endless car alarm. <sighs> Only we would have silence while setting up for a session. Every single, every single session we've had to cut it short or work around interference. First it was the jackhammer construction zone. Then it was just pedestrians. pedestrians screaming outside and now it's a damn endless car alarm. Welcome to Paranormal Quest. Ooh, EDI is going off. Are you over there by that stall? If I walk over there, will you say something through this box in my hand? Try and say a word that will let us know who you are. Is this Francis? Would you be more comfortable if we had one of our female friends come up? Again, extremely quiet. It is extremely quiet and we've had a hell of a go with it tonight at the arcade. Yeah. Um, you know, the spirit box was kind of inundated with radio interference. Mm. They had surprise construction outside <laughs> before we got here. And, uh, and then that car alarm and stuff. The Adelaide Arcade is not normally this noisy, but that's just our luck. Yeah, it's, it's out of the hands of everybody involved here. So. Yeah, so it just happens. It's like we pick the best nights for everything. <laughs> <laughs> so, but this place is really cool and it's interesting that we got to showcase and show everyone the ghost stories and some creepy ghost tube responses at the Adelaide Zoo. Yes. Well, that's it, everyone. That concludes our adventures at the Adelaide Zoo and the Adelaide Arcade. If you enjoyed this episode, make sure you hit that like button and share the video with your friends and family and leave us a comment down below letting us know what you thought of our investigation today. If you're new here, make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on bell notifications so you never miss a video because we have so much more to come. Traveling to some of the most haunted locations in the world and sharing our paranormal activity with you. If you'd like to support the channel additionally, we do have a Patreon or you can become a member of the YouTube channel where you can gain additional perks for your additional support. But until next time guys, stay safe. We will see you on our next adventure in the next video on our paranormal quest.